Hey guys, today's video is going to be based on a tag. You may have seen this go around. It is called the All About My Eyeshadow Palettes Tag. I first saw this on Morgan Turner's channel and then soon after on my little makeup channel, which is run by Tracy. I will link both of their YouTube channels below if you're interested. Coming up with this list was pretty challenging. I see people struggling to do these lists all the time, whether it's like rank my top 10 palettes or you know what are the five makeup things or 10 makeup things that I just couldn't do without. And they say how difficult it is, but now that I'm trying it myself, I'm like, oh yeah. And I don't even have half the collection of some of the YouTubers on here. Uh, so anyways, without further ado, my newest eyeshadow palette is Tom Ford's Honeymoon Quad. This is what I'm wearing today. So, so pretty. Um, I've done a tutorial on this one as well and everything I'll either link above, below, so you guys can reference back to it. And then for the oldest makeup palette, uh, this one I really had to think about for quite a while. I think it's got to be this Makeup Forever kind of custom palette. So <laughs> I only have six shades on here. Uh, it is oldest and I've forgotten about it. It is at the bottom of my makeup drawer. But there are probably these two shades on here I've had for over 10 years at this point. Um, I bought some of these ones four or five years ago that I've added onto here. But yeah, this is the oldest and probably, spoiler, the biggest palette that I have. For the most expensive, depending on how you look at it, if you look at it from the perspective of how much does each gram or each ounce cost, the outcome or the answer is gonna be different on just being based off of a dollar amount for the entire palette. So going with the first one, uh, cost per gram, cost per ounce, it's gonna to be Tom Ford Honeymoon. Any of the Tom Ford quads you see, they are $88. So you get a total of 0.21 grams, excuse me, 0.21 ounce or six grams of product per palette. That is followed by Pat McGrath palettes at $125. This is 1.32 grams for every eyeshadow. There are 10 in a Mothership palette. And then in third place is Natasha Denona's 15 Pan. Um, this palette and any of the 15 Pan palettes are $129 US and you get 2.5 grams times 15 or 0.08 ounces times 15. So looking at how much product you get and how much it costs per ounce per gram, it's going to be Tom Ford, followed by Pat McGrath, and then Natasha Denona. But if we were to look at it, just how much it costs per palette, regardless of how many pans of product and, and quantity of it, it's going to be Natasha Denona's 15 pan palettes um, for my collection. For most affordable, it is these Coastal Scent. 88 eyeshadow palettes. They don't sell this anymore. This is the shimmer palette uh, But I remember back in the day when I got these they were kind of touted as there was like a lot of Mac dupes in them And you get very pigmented eyeshadows. You get 88 colors in one pan. It's super super affordable It's been so long. I don't remember the price and because they don't sell it anymore. I don't have a reference uh, from memory I think they were around $35 US, and this is what you got. Look at this! How could you not be excited? You know, if you weren't into, or if you were into makeup, if you weren't prepared to spend a lot of money, get all kinds of different palettes, you know, get into the luxury and high-end brands, this is this was a great option. I mean, it still is. I think Coso Sans still makes palettes similar to this. Uh, it just looks a little different uh, than, than this layout here, but it's just extremely affordable. For 88 colors, this is a great gift for anybody starting out. Um, I have not used this because it's so old too. I have not used this in a long time, but I just, it's so pretty. 
And these are all satins. Um, so this is the shimmer collection here. Next is Most Colorful Palette. And Most Colorful Palette is actually gonna be another Coastal Sands palette. This is also the 88. This is the matte version of the shimmer we just saw. And I got quite a bit of use out of it. It was like my go-to palette for anything. If I wanted a nice base color, I'd come up here or along here. If I wanted a brow highlight, any of these would do. Um, if I wanted very neutral colors, I stick with this. Cool tone, warm tone. You want pink, purple, you want green, aquamarine, uh, blues, just anything was available here. Now, not every single pan in here is as pigmented or was as easy to work with as you know some of the best uh, from, from this palette. Again, though, for under $40 US, you just, I don't know. I'm not sure it gets better than this. Now, because these are quite old, I no longer use them. But you can see I've hit pan on these two colors. Uh, and, you know, being neutrals, they were fairly easy to reach for, and I often, often did. And for smallest palette, it's going to be my Lancome 5 pan. Super small for size comparison. The next smallest palette I have is the Viseart Petit Pro Soleil. And this five pan here, they don't make any more, but this is in the color story Taupe Craze. I've hit pan on four out of the five. This one I haven't hit pan on, but um, on the back of each of these palettes is like how you would use each color. So there's an all over base right up here. And then this is to apply all over the lid and you were to add this darker matte shade on your crease. This is your highlighter or shade topper. And then you would use this darkest shade, this deep brown here as a liner. Uh, super pigmented, very buttery, very easy to work with, not a lot of fallout. This is discontinued, but Lancome has come out with kind of a new version of the five pan palette, uh, which I haven't gotten a chance to use, but I would imagine when I look at the ratings online, they're very highly rated, so I would imagine uh, the new version works just as well. But this is the smallest palette that I have. And for the biggest palette, it is, and I already said this at the beginning, is my Makeup Forever. Even though there's only six shadows in here, uh, this is the biggest palette. Uh, the close second is going to be Jeffree Star's Bloodlust. And given the size of it, if you don't have a big vanity and you have to hold on to this to work with the shadows, it's gonna be a bit of getting used to because it's not quite a nice flat square. You gotta find an angle here and hold on to it. Um, so while it's not the biggest palette, because of its shape combined with size, can present some challenges. Um, but I do, I do like how it feels. Nice velvety material. Next is Best Memory. Uh, it's got to be this one because of how often and how long I've used it for until I officially retired it six months ago. Up until then, I still, you know, opened this and, and chose a color or two to work into my look. But this is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. And I've hit pan on the base color uh, and this color. This is my favorite. It's a matte shade. And I used to apply the shade both uh, as an eyeshadow and as a blush. I love my nude colors. This is basically my skin tone, but better. Uh, yeah, I love that. And for, again, I don't remember the price exactly, but I remember thinking, hey, I got this many colors. Still smells like chocolate. Uh, I got this many colors. They were fairly pigmented. The shadows were fairly easy to blend and work with. I just have a lot of good memories of using this often and it was easy for me to create a nice, comfortable, neutral look and then be on my day. For the palette that's worth the hype, it's gonna be Divine Rose. Pat McGrath's Divine Rose first came out as a limited edition palette last fall, immediately sold out, and then they came back mid end of February this year. Also sold out, but has since come back two more times, and now you can get it at Sephora. 
I didn't check if it sold out on Sephora, but um, it doesn't look like it'll go away anytime soon. So it looks like it's a permanent product. But look at this, it's so beautiful. My favorite shade on this palette, VR Rose Venus, a duochrome, and this Iridescent Pink 003. Look at that pink you get from it. I love those two shades. It is worth the hype. And for palettes or palette not worth the hype, I don't have a specific palette because I find myself oftentimes going to read reviews over and over again until I'm absolutely certain I want to get that palette. Um, that was before I got into collecting more makeup and that was way before um, starting this channel. So I think in the future, maybe I'll get into some palettes that might not be worth the hype. I hope that's never the case, but it could happen. Um, what I do want to show you in lieu of a specific palette is the concept of holiday palettes and special palettes. And from experience, holiday palettes or these, you know, special seasonal palettes aren't necessarily always the quality you would get from their regular line. Here's an example. Um, we're not gonna focus on the company, but it's just the idea of it. This is one palette that if you bought um, so much skincare from the company, then you could pay an additional amount to get the palette. And it's bundled as a deal, right? Like it's basically like a bundle, or if you spend this much, you get a gift. And this palette looks really, really, really pretty. Um, I got this as a gift. Let me swatch it for you. So if you've got a matte shade here, a lot of them are shimmers, metallics, and let's do a matte shade, that deepest. Let's do the purple, that's a shimmer. And then let's do a light shimmer shade, that's pink. And then let's do this kind of gray blue here. This is what it looks like on my finger. You can tell. Kind of patchy. Purples are difficult anyway to get right, but I'll just swatch it. Very patchy matte color, patchy purple shimmer, and these two here, you can't really see it. It's not a lot of payoff, and it looks bright on the finger too. And you can still create looks using this palette, but you're gonna have to work pretty hard. And there's a good chance what you envision and the outcome is gonna be quite different for that reason. Uh, another palette that I got for holiday season, which some of the shades I really love. This one here, I've hit pan because I love these <laughs> mauves and tones, as you can see. Um, so this I use a lot, but these shimmers here, not very pigmented. Let's swatch it. Looks good on the finger. Still very light. This is supposed to be a deep blue. Yeah, better than the one from before, but not quite what you think it would be. And typically with the holiday palettes, the packaging is so pretty and you get little brushes with it, you might get a little mascara, some lip gloss, lipstick, and they're just so fun to get, give as a gift or even get as a gift. But typically, the quality of the product is not quite the regular line. So I do think the idea of holiday palettes is overhyped for that reason. Now for my favorite palette, it's going to be Viseart's Editorial Number no. 8. This would be the brightest palette as well, but when we saw the Coastal Sense, you saw how many colors and shades there were, so that was a little hard to beat. That was indeed the most colorful. Um, but this is my favorite palette. And you might think it might have been Divine Rose because I do love, love Divine Rose. And I have so many videos on Divine Rose too. Um, you know, it was almost like, that's the given, that's my favorite. 
Uh, it is a favorite, Divine Rose is a favorite in terms of how easy it is to use and how much I reach for it. But this is a favorite because every single time when I look at it, it makes me happy, it makes me smile, it makes me feel like, oh, I gotta do something creative, I gotta get out of my comfort zone and do something different. And every time I do a colorful look, and even if that colorful look is not um, the most mainstream and people don't might not find it like, hey, I wanna do that, it might just be too out there, or I don't get it quite right because I'm you know, trying to understand like how to work with this color and make it so that it, it's wearable. Um, but whatever the case may be, I always have fun using this palette. And just the other day, I used this green here in this kind of like bluish green, maybe aquamarine, um, to create a look, and it never disappoints. It always performs excellent to provide that colorful base that then you can add other shadows from different brands, whatever the case may be, on it to subdue the color. But because you have that bright base, your, your look, the outcome is going to be what you would expect, you know, that colorfulness, whether you want the full colorfulness to come through, the full brightness to come through, or a more subdued version, you have a great base to work with. So for that reason, for actually many, many of those reasons, this is my favorite palette. And for my most used palette, um, it's Pat McGrath. But I think it's worth mentioning, before Divine Rose uh, from Pat McGrath came along, I had another palette that I used a lot. And by a lot, I mean five days out of the week. Uh, this is Natasha Denona's Lila palette. Uh, once I open it, you guys see it, you, you might see why that is. Between Lila and Divine Rose, we just have purples, pink, taupes, and mauves capitalized. Like, <laughs> this is it. Between those two palettes, you've got all those shades that you need. Um, there is no bad luck with this palette. I also do not think very hard with the palette or have to work very hard um, for these colors to work. And I talked about in my uh, last Leela Looks tutorial palette on how when she, when Natasha Denona designed it, she's thinking you can create a look if you choose these three shades here, if you go across, if you use like a quad like this, um, if you use it diagonally, the colors just work together. Now I haven't gone in, even though I, I used it um, at one point very, very often, I haven't gone in to do quads, but I know that I'll take a couple of colors from here and apply some colors from here and it blends well. If I stick with these two, you know, row or these two columns here for a very warm tone, but very glittery look, it's gonna come out great, it's gonna come out beautiful. This is a palette, if you love purples and these type of tones, this is the kind of palette you could um, wear from daytime to evening so easily. And if I had to pick an all-time favorite shade for my collection, I don't know, VR Rose Venus is pretty great, but this Helio here, unsuspecting. Unsuspecting because it doesn't jump out at you, but if you look at it, that metallic, you can apply that shade topper on anything and it would be beautiful. It's soft. It's definitely a soft glam. This whole palette is a soft glam. Uh, it doesn't have those shades like Pat McGrath that just jumps out at you like Iridescent Pink 003 or um, VR Rose Venus, but the duochromes on here is beautiful in their own way. So I am crazy about this palette like I am for Divine Rose. And if I could pick two most used palettes, those would go hand in hand. Now, I do have one more palette I wanted to talk about on this video, and it's not part of the original tag, but I feel like it's related. This is the most underrated palette in my collection. While because of the brand, I do think the palette itself gets a lot of love when you you know, put other brands next to it in comparison. But within the brand itself, it's the palette that I think is most underrated. And this is Pat McGrath's Midnight Sun. Again, when you look at the color story here, it doesn't jump out at you at 
like what amazing things can you do with this like how is this going to be uh, such a great item to add to my collection and I can do a lot of great things from here um, this might not you know this might not jump out at you that way uh, and I felt the same until I got it used it and I've never created uh, a look I didn't like and all of the shades including these special shades here are easy to use now here this one is very obviously that foil texture is that you know inner corner glitter you can put it on your brow bone you can obviously use it as a shade topper but this purple here so unsuspecting it's soft easy to work with you can put this one color this metallic all over your lid and just blend it gives you dimension just because of the texture like that one shade um, these mattes here easy to work with these metallics here also very easy to work with just yeah and I think it's because the combination of how easy they are to work with and just how beautiful the colors are uh, I think when you go into it you just gotta trust it it's already easy to work with you just gotta trust it pick a couple colors next to each other and try to create a look uh, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised so this is my most underrated palette in my collection uh, because it sits next to Divine Rose and Bronze Seduction, two extremely popular mothership palettes from Pat McGrath. So yeah, I can see why it doesn't get the attention that I think it deserves. So there you go, all about my eyeshadow palettes. Um, this was kind of fun, it's different from what I've been doing. And if you have a makeup channel, I think this is a great video to do because it takes you um, out of the usual look and review, but allows you just to take a look at your own collection and share that with people. Um, if you are doing this, please let me know. I would love to watch your version, um, your take on this tag. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you guys next time.